This is a brand new 2023. It's a Ram 1500. It's a crew cab short box in the new body style, of course. Uh, a couple of cool things on this truck. It's the uh, Sport with the Night Edition. So when you go to the Sport trim, you get quite a few extra goodies standard with that. You're going to get the bigger 12-inch touch screen. It's going to come with the nav. You get, like, power pedals. Uh, it's got the digital dash now on the, uh, the the front dash cluster, so it's pretty neat. We're going to take a look at that with the redesign for 2023. So you get all kinds of good stuff there. Now, this one is a Night Edition. So when you upgrade to the Night Edition, you get the 22-inch black rims. I uh, get all the black badging. The uh, the grill's done a little bit different. It's more of a, a satin black finish. So there's quite a bit of that stuff going on. Um, it also is a level two. Uh, when you go to the level two, uh, it's a little bit fancier. You get over the standard sport. Uh, you're, it's another 1900 bucks for that, but you're going to get the remote start. Uh, you get the storage bins in the back. When you flip down the seats, there's an extra storage capacity area there. We're going to show you how that works. Uh, you also get the front front sensors, rear sensors for parking, so if you don't so you don't run into stuff when you're backing, backing up at a parking spot. A couple other things this truck has, uh, we added the sport hood, which really dresses it up, makes it look cool. And then if you're going to be pulling a trailer, it's got a nice package for that too. So there's a combination of things there that that help this uh, truck be better for that application. It's got the uh, 392 anti-spin rear axle. Uh, it also comes with the bigger tank. It's a 125 liter fuel tank on this, as well as the hitch and the brake controller. So that's kind of a, a summary of the truck as far as the options go. So let's take a look at it here. We're going to set the, just set my clipboard down, and we're going to kind of walk around here, and I'm going to show you some of the stuff. So for starters, these are the 22 inch rims. You can see they're a bit taller. So when you go to the 22s, the overall height of the of the rubber gets a little bit smaller, but you get more rim. So <clears throat> it's uh, two inches taller, of course, because you go from the 20s to the 22s. But they look really nice. They finish it off really good, too, particularly when you go with the black rims on the black truck. Got the black badging that we talked about. That's all part of that night edition, too. So everything's done in a satin black. And you notice we added the uh, mud flaps. There's a set on the front as well as a set on the rear. So that's included on the price that you're going to be seeing online when you're looking at it. But uh, that is uh, something that we installed uh, when the PDI was done. It got done at that time. We talk about the grill. This is a satin block finish. You can see the Ram logo is a little bit different as well as this has got a different tone to it. A little harder to tell on the um, on the Sport model with the Night Edition than just the normal Sport, but is if you if you were here physically, you could kind of see the difference between the two. A normal Sport, this is just uh, color matched, or this has got a bit of a satin black look to it. So you got the color key grills, cool lights. They got the LEDs around the outside edge here. You can kind of see they're lit up a little bit, dressing it up quite nicely. Down below, we've got a, uh, a fog lights are built right in. We've got the little park sensors in there. That's what these little circles are here. So if you're about to run into something, they're going to pick up that uh, there's something in your way. It'll start beeping at you and letting you know. On the hood, this is the sport hood. So you get these louvers here. Another thing I want to point out, Joe's get this too with the sport hood. But you see it says here it's got the eTorque logo. What that basically is is there's a there's a big battery behind the back seat, and it just spins up uh, spins up a belt that turns the cam over in the engine, and it gives you a lot more torque out of the hole. You're picking up about, about 100 foot-pounds of torque over the standard 5.7 Hemi, so if you're going to be pulling a trailer, it's really nice for that, too. On the sides, uh, you got remote proximity keyless entry, so as long as the key's in your pocket, all you got to do is press this button to lock it, and then to unlock the door, all you got to do is reach in and grab the handle like that, and it'll let you in. Inside, we've got cloth uh, with cloth leather seats, so this is cloth with the leather on the outside. You'll see it's got a nice trim in the stitching, so you got lots of panels kind of mixed, mixed in and stitched in just for aesthetic looks, so it looks really nice. Double stitching on the headrests. These are adjustable. You can kind of see how they ratchet forward like that. Gives you a little bit more neck support if you're driving on a long road trip. Map pocket storage there. Also, when you go to the higher trim levels, you get the extra storage bin up here. So you get a little tray in here. You can kind of keep some stuff in there. There's a little liner in here, too, that you can take out if you want to clean clean it up if you spill something. Glove box, all your owner's manual and everything in here. Uh, it also comes with the locking wheel nuts. That's included in the price you see online as well. But there's your key if you want to take the locking wheel nuts off. Or if you want, you can go right back to the original lug nuts, too, just by putting those ones back on there. So it's kind of leave it up to you to decide. Um... Up here in the country, we don't have a lot of theft up here, so it's not a big deal. But, you know, maybe if you're in the city or if you live in an area where there's where that kind of stuff happens a lot, you may want to leave those locking wheel nuts because those, those tires and wheels can get pretty expensive if somebody comes along and steals them on you. Um, all weather mats, you can kind of see how nice they are. they got the nice stitching with the Ram logo. These just clip off like that, so if you want to take them out, you can. You can upgrade to a, 
um, the weather techs or the uh, Mopar ones as well. And they're kind of like a uh, rubber and they upgrade, they, they go up the sides. It gives you a bit more of a dish. Uh, so if you're always kind of dirty, you got a bit of mud on your feet and stuff, you may want to spend the extra money on that. Just give us a call and get your price on what those would cost. But that's a fairly popular option that we see. On the doors, uh, got some nice trim. You got the vinyl insets here. You got a little bit of metal. Uh, you got the chrome or the, uh, the carbon fiber piece on the top. So everything's kind of dressed up and, and it layers itself to, to, you know, give that quality look. A little bit of storage in here. More storage down there as well for putting your junk. You notice the back windows are all tinted out black, even the, particularly the back one with the privacy glass. That's a power sliding rear window. So there's a switch in the dash up top and it'll just power open and close from the, uh, from the driver's seat. It's kind of nice. You can pop that window open a little bit, then just crack your driver's side window open. And then what it'll do is it'll suck the air in through the back window and then go out the driver's side window when you got the window down. Kind of gets you a little breeze over your shoulder when you're driving down the highway. It makes for quite a comfortable trip. But also notice it's got rear defrost in it as well. So when the, with, keep your windows from fogging up. Press that button there. You can see your headrest just flips down. So now it's, uh, gives you a little bit better visibility. So if you're driving on a, on a longer road trip or something like that and there's nobody back there, it's kind of nice to be able to drop that down. It just improves your visibility. Bench seat in the back. We've got the uh, fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders here for the kids. That flips up out of the way if you need to. Now you've got room for three people. The seats just lift up nice and easy out of the way. So this is part of that level two package you talked about. So normally there wouldn't have this uh, little divider here, but you can see it also flips forward, and then I can flip it up like that, and now you got even more storage underneath the seats. So you can kind of lay it out, if, depending on what you want to keep under there. You see how it's got that little tab there as well? That just fits through that hole there. You can kind of see the hole there when you flip it over, and it'll lock it in place to make it, if you, if you want to keep that divider further back, you can do that as well. Floor mats, once again, they're already hooked up. They've got the little pins to hold, the, hold them everything in place. This lifts up, and inside there you've got your storage bins. Nice big storage bins. This is part of that level two as well that we talked about. These just lift out, so if you want to clean it, you can. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but uh, but you can just take those out if you spill gunk in there or whatever, and you can kind of hose them off. So it's nice and easy to keep everything clean. I uh, got some map pockets in the back to store your stuff. Over here in the center console for the kids, there's some USB ports so they can charge their cell phones. They've also got a plug-in in here. If they want to plug in their laptops or their gaming consoles or whatever, you can do that on a longer road trip. Makes it a little easier for them to keep them entertained. Back door, same thing as the front. You know, we've got the vinyl, the metal, the wood, everything kind of layered out. Lots of storage for the kids in the back, too, for their pockets for storing their stuff. Going to the rear of the vehicle, you can see the mud flaps a little bit better from here. I'm going to kind of lower the camera angle down so you can kind of see the rear exhaust. It's got the dual pipes coming out the back. They're done out in the kind of a satin black finish. More of a, well, it's more of a chrome black finish, I guess. So it look, they look pretty cool sticking out the back there. Uh, trailer hitch on the rear. So if you're going to be pulling a trailer, this is an option that we added. You can kind of see it's got ready for the safety chains. They're all ready to go. And then you've got your wiring harness, your four pin, and then your bigger one if you're pulling something with electric brakes. So... Uh, it's nice and easy to hook these up. All your wiring's in there, and this one also has a trailer brake controller as well, and not just the wiring. So if you do ever want to hook up a trailer, it's you know everything's already there for you. Uh, backup camera built right into the handle. In the back, just lower the tailgate. You kind of see how it came down easy there. There's a little, there's some shock, little shock absorber in behind this tail light, and it just kind of engages that and uses that to lower it down. Five and a half foot box, so a reasonable amount of storage. You can see there's these little hooks there. There's four of them. There's one in every corner, so you got something to anchor your tie down straps down to. And you'll also see they got these little grooves here on the box, right there and there. The idea behind those is you cut like a two by eight, the proper width to slide in there, and it'll just pop in place. And then you end up with like a little divider wall in there. So if you put something in the back, it's not going to slide to the front when you're driving around. So it's a cheap, well, relatively cheap fix to, uh, to uh, put them in there. So I usually cut one up and then I take it out and lose it all the time. It seems to be a common thing for me with, the, with my personal trucks. In the back, we'll just kind of open this side here too. You can see on this side, there's another one of those storage bins as well. So that's all part of that level two uh, that we talked about earlier. Let's hop in the front now. I'm gonna look at some more things here. So it's got power windows, it's got power locks, it's got power mirrors. The mirrors are um, folding as well. I just press that button there and they fold in. I press it again, they fold back out of the way. So if you're in uh, underground parking or someplace where it's a little bit tight and you need that extra space, 
real easy to pop that button. Driver seat's power, so it's forward and back. It'll also go up and down just by pressing this button here. You can raise and lower the seat as well, and you can power recline the back. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to get the driver's seat a little bit more comfortable, particularly if you're shorter, right? You can jack the seat up. makes it a lot more comfortable. You can also see a lot better. Okay, uh, it comes with power pedals. You can move the pedals in and out. The nice thing about having the power pedals is that if you're a bit shorter, you can kind of suck the uh, power pedals towards you and get a little bit further away from the airbag. Another thing I want to show you, too, is I just dropped this lever here, this one right here, right there. And now the steering wheel goes up and down. That's how you engage your tilt, but it'll also go in and out. I don't know. I can kind of see they're coming in and out. So it, uh, you can get yourself into a really nice, comfortable position. If you're tall like I am, it's really nice to push the pedals all the way forward and then just kind of drop the steering wheel and then suck it back towards you. You can get, like, a really comfortable position because of all the different abilities to, to move everything. Automatic headlights. So your headlights are going to automatically turn on as soon as it's dark enough out. And then you can turn your fog lights off and on just by pressing that. And then this button here is how you turn the little dome light on on your cargo box so you can see what you're doing when it's dark out. And then over here we've got our dash brightness for your uh, tack and your, or your speedo and all that kind of stuff. Basically controls those gauges up there. Okay, on the steering wheel, we've got our touch pad here, which is going to control everything in that center dash cluster. We're going to go through the different gauges that we have. We've also got some diff uh, different buttons here for your hands-free control, so you can activate your hands-free, answer all your phone calls, all that kind of stuff. There's also this little button in here, which changes our dash layout. I'm going to show you how that works here in a second. If you look behind the steering wheel, there's a couple of buttons here. This changes the radio stations that you're on. And on this side of the steering wheel over here, there's this button, and that controls your volume up and down by hitting those buttons. So you can kind of, and you can also change your sources. Like you can pop between AM, FM, Sirius XM, all that kind of stuff just by hitting those buttons right there. Um, over here is there's our cruise control for set, coast, and resume. Uh, pretty straightforward how to use that. And then your gear selector shift. So it's an eight-speed automatic. So what you do is you just spin your dial to drive, put your foot on the brake, and then just put it that way. Now we're in drive. We're good to go. Uh, but you can use this to downshift. So if you say, I won't only want to use, say you're going down a steep hill and you want to use the, the engine to hold you back, just press the minus button. It'll downshift for you. Two high, 4x4 four four auto, 4x4 four four high, 4x4 four four low, and then your automatic start, stop, shut off. So let's go through these buttons together. Uh, Two-wheel drive is what you're going to drive when it's dry pavement. 4x4 four four auto is what you want to use when there's a bit of snow on the road, but it's kind of still dry in spots. You want to use that one there and let the truck decide if it wants to be in four-wheel drive or not. And then you use four high. Uh, you're going to want to use that when it's uh, when you're driving off-road and in gravel. Uh, the difference between these two, uh, this is engages the four-wheel drive and keeps it in four-wheel drive. Um, so it's a lot easier on the system because if you're in heavy mud or muck or something, it's not engage, disengage, engage, disengage, right? Like where it'll do that in four-by-four four auto mode. Uh, so it's just easier on the system. But you want to use 4x4 auto mode on pavement because otherwise it's going to bind up your drive line because everything's always spinning in 4x4. Um, so it, that's the better one to use on dry pavement slash sloppy roads. And you want to use two-wheel drive because it disconnects the front end so your front end isn't spinning like it is in 4x4. So each, each one has its own purpose. So pretty straightforward to use it, but just basically dry pavement, kind of bad roads on pavement, and then off-road. So you just kind of remember that when you're driving. You've also got the four low if you need it for some reason. Let's say you got like a heavy boat you're pulling out of the lake or, I don't know, someplace where you need a ton of torque, you can use it there. You also see it's got this end with a little arrow pointing up to that little button there. That's a neutral disconnect. Uh, what that's going to do is disconnect everything on the four-wheel drive so you can flat tow it. So if you wanted to pull this behind your motorhome, you could. Um, you know, for some reason, let's say you wanted to pull this behind something, like say you had a grader and you wanted to pull this truck behind your grader, you would use that neutral disconnect in order to do that. Also got the auto start stop. You can hit that button. Basically what this truck does is when you're sitting at a stoplight, it's going to shut off. Uh, and then when you go to take off again, it's going to uh, restart the engine. But it doesn't engage the starter. That's the nice system. That's the nice thing about our system with the e-torque. You're not actually engaging the starter on the flywheel. You're engaging in the belt that spins the cam and the engine, so it's not going to wear out. Um, so, I mean, the only reason I can think you'd do that is you just, for whatever reason, you want to keep the truck running. And I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, because if the truck will keep running, it'll decide if it needs to run or not. So, you don't really need that. 
Okay, so let's go through the gauges. I'm going to try and get the camera at an angle here. We don't have too much glare. It's kind of hard to hard to get that, though. Let me move this head with the visor over. Yeah, a little bit better, I guess. Okay, so this is all digital now for 2023. So you got a digital tack, you got a digital speedometer, and you got the digital center speedometer. Now I'm going to press this button here now, this one, and we're going to cascade the dash. So now it gives you a different layout. So everything can change now, where the old ones had kind of more of an analog gauge. This is all digital. So now you've got your tripometer, your fuel economy. This is your trailer brake gain control. And you can kind of toggle through all these depending on what you want to do. If you want to access one of them, you just hit the button. Now you can go look at your tire PSI, for instance. Okay, so that's all sort of your, your vehicle information summary screens. So back to your speedometer. So there is this one. You can go just the digital speedometer if you want to do it this way, and then you get the digital tack down below, so it's kind of whatever you like better. Next screen is your vehicle info. So you've got your total uh, drive time. You've got your start-stop setup, your tire pressures, all your gauges. So this is like your oil gauge. So you've got your life on your oil, your oil temperature, and your oil pressure are all kind of laid out there, so you can look at that. This is your coolant, your drive line, tranny temperature, battery temperature. So basically anything to do with the truck. Uh, this is fuel economy too, which is kind of nice. You can reset that here. So you've got your range, your fuel economy, uh, your current fuel economy, and then your average. So it kind of lays it all out there for you. Tripometers, there's two of them. There's trip A and trip B. So you can reset trip B. You can see now it's down to zero. You're getting 14.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Obviously, we're not getting that because we're idling. And then how long we've been driving. But you can see it still maintained your original data. So you've got your, uh, this was dealer traded in, so that's why it's got 400K on it. So you can see how the, the difference is on the, it still remembers the first data page. Navigation, this is probably one of the coolest features. You can take your nav screen and it'll actually load it up in here. So you can have it on your main center screen, which you're gonna look at in a second. We can have it displayed here, so which is kind of cool. Uh, then we go to the trailer tool. So this is your distance that you've bent, pulled your trailer. So as you hook your trailer up, okay, it'll it'll record that like its own separate tripometer, so you can know how far you've gone. And then this is your trailer brake controller. So as you step on the brakes, you can see how much, you know, what percentage of brake gain you're shoving out when you got a gain of five. So that's just to do with your electric brakes. Then you've got your radio stations. It'll tell you what radio station you're on. Uh, if you're on Sirius XM, it'll tell you the name of the artist, that kind of stuff, all that good stuff. Messages, um, emergency auto braking, we've got it turned off right now, but you can set, change those settings. There's a place to set it up there. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Um, screen setup, this is where you're going to program everything. So you can kind of go through here. And I do not like having the compass there. I like having the time there. So now I've got the clock up here. Okay, but you can see I could also change the far right if I wanted. Any of these kind of layouts, you can go in here. You can change the style. You can go from the traditional, modern, whatever you like. Like, it just gives you a lot of custom ability there to, to get in there and play with the stuff. So uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that, but let's just say that if there's something that you'd like to change on your main dash, chances are pretty good you're going to be able to get in there and piddle with it, change it up the way you like it. Okay. Moving on, uh, we've got our start-stop button. So you just basically put your foot on the brake, put the start, hit the start-stop button to start it. As long as the key's inside the truck, it's going to know what's here, and it's going to let you do that. We've already gone over that. Uh, this is your brake controller here for your, tra your uh, trailer brakes. You've got traction control button here, so you can turn your traction control off if you want to spin your tires. You just hit that. We can hit the tow haul mode button. What you're going to do is you're going to hit that if you're pulling a trailer. Uh, what it does is it just changes the shift patterns inside the engine. So it just downshifts more aggressively. It'll upshift more, uh, you know, like it'll wait longer before it shifts up. It just makes it a lot better when you're pulling a trailer. And then you get your park sensors for the front and the rear. So when we were looking at the front bumper, remember those circles we looked at? Those are the park sensors. So let's say I'm driving, and I don't want it beeping at me. Say you're driving down a, through a hay field, right, and it starts beeping at you because it thinks you're going to hit the grass. You can just hit that button and turn them off so you don't have to listen to it beeping at you. Okay? Same with the rear ones. You can turn those off, too. Uh, nice little cup holders here. You've got a bin here for some storage. Just coins can go in there. If it comes out, if you want to clean it, you can. So if you get a bunch of gunk in there. Down here, lots of storage. There's another plug-in down here as well. Flick that open, so if you want to plug your laptop in in the front, you can do that there. We've also got some storage areas for your cell phones, USB ports. You can kind of plug those in there. Those for charging the front phones. In here, pop this little storage lid open. You can see this lifts up. Got a nice little storage bin in here. This has got a liner in it, too. And you can see there's a little uh, USB port here as well, so you can plug your phone into there. And then more storage down below. 
It's got a little divider that you can flip up. That just stops your stuff from sliding around in the bottom of the box. If you want to keep it at the back, you can. But lots of room for junk. Overhead, we've got um, your power sliding rear window button here. This just pops open for your sunglasses. Got a nice little liner in there to keep those out of the way so you don't get those scratched up. And you can see it's got these buttons here. So on this one here is your SOS. If we hit that, the RCMP are going to show up and find out what's going on. So it's an emergency alert to, and they phone the cops and send them. Uh, if we hit this button, this is your, con or your uh, Sirius XM Guardian concierge service. Um, there's some things that they can do for you there. Main reason you want that is there's an app that you can download on your phone. You can use your, your phone to start your truck. Now, <laughs> it's subscription-based. I think you get like three months free, and then after that, you got to pay for it. It's about 25 bucks a month. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to start your truck, lock your truck. It'll tell you where your vehicle's at. Uh, it'll send you alerts if you need an oil change. Uh, it does all kinds of different things. Um, basically, most people just use it for the remote start. But it's great to use it, uh, like, if you can't see your pickup truck. Like, this truck does have a remote start on it on the key fob. But if you don't have a clear line of sight, the, the truck won't pick it up when you hit the remote start. But if you have this and you're subscribed to it, you can just use your phone to start it. So it just depends how you, what you're using it for. Okay, so let's go have a look here. Uh, I'm going to go, we'll start with the radio. So it comes with Sirius XM satellite radio. Lots of different ways you can get your music in here. You've got AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB ports, Alexa. Uh, if you've got Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on your phone, just pair it up. It'll replace the phone button down here with the C, and then you just hit that button, and that's how you play your Apple CarPlay. Highly recommend that if you've got a newer phone, you hook up your Apple CarPlay with the truck. It's just a nicer system to use. It uh, pairs it up really nice. Uh, you can use your Apple Maps. You can use your Google Maps. You can use all your Apple Music will play through there if you want. So it's a lot easier to, to interface with it. Um, you can also just pair your phone the traditional way if you like, and let the truck kind of run your phone. Um, but I prefer Apple CarPlay out of the out of the two. On your main home screen, you got a nav up here, and then down below you've got your music. You can also change your page layouts, so we can do like a four grid layout if we like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to customize this. We're going to put our uh, seats on this side, and then down below I think I'm going to put my uh, temperature controls. And then I think over here, what do we want to put over there? Maybe something to do with our gauges. And then up here, we're going to put our, I don't know, radio, radio information. Okay, so now you've got a, a different four-grid layout, and there's your trailer brake and your transmission temperature. So if you're pulling a trailer, you've got some gauges to look at. Once again, these are all customizable. You can still go back to the other page if you still have it there, and you can slide between the two. Um, Nice thing about them is just the adaptability of everything. You can just kind of make it the way you want it. Uh, we already went over the radio station. So here's your heater controls. So there's two ways to increase the heat. You can use these buttons here on the side for the driver. You can use these buttons over here for the passenger. You can access the comfort buttons. We can change it there by cranking these up and down just by sliding them or touching the buttons. The other thing you can do on your home page is you can access your heater controls through hitting these buttons up here at the top. So I can change my temperature just through there if I wanted to. Same with the passenger, you can just do it there as well, and they can turn on their heated seats through this, through hitting those access buttons. Or you can hit these comfort controls if you want to do it that way. Um, next screen we've got is your uh, nav. So nice, just a big version of the maps. So this is uh, like the first screen we looked at had a smaller one. This one here would be kind of handy if you're going on like a longer road trip and you want to see where you're going and what your turns you're going to make. It's just nicer to be able to, to do some stuff with this, like you can spin it and zoom in and out and do all kinds of things. Hit recenter when you're done. Vehicle settings, this is where you kind of program everything. So there's your backup camera. You can also zoom in if you want to see your uh, trailer hitch. This will automatically screen comes on as soon as you put it in reverse, so you don't actually have to access it, but that's just one way of getting to it. And this is where we program the truck. So you can program everything in here. You know, how long you want the vehicle to run when you shut it off. We can go in here and play with the wipers, for instance. Do we want our rain-sensitive wipers to work, yes or no? What that means is basically there's a little sensor on the windshield, and as soon as you get the little rain on it, it'll automatically wipe your, uh, wipe your windshield for you. You can turn those off and on. Uh, turn your lights like this is your delay when you shut your vehicle off. We can play with the uh, braking system. Do you want your emergency brake to automatically come on when you shut the vehicle off or not? 
um, all kinds of stuff. So there's a ton of settings in here, and literally a person could probably spend an hour just kind of going through all the different options that are available to people. But uh, needless to say, it's pretty customizable, and you can kind of get everything set up the way you like it. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Like I said, this is our uh, most popular model. This is Sport. This is the Level 2, so it's a little bit fancier than some of the other ones you're going to be looking at out there. That's why the price is a little bit more. But uh, if you're looking to get yourself a great-looking truck that uh, is going to pull a trailer, it's going to look fantastic in your driveway, give us a call. Come on down. Let's uh, get together and have a cup of coffee and take this one for a drive.